everybody out there know who we are. <laughs> that is Swung Monkey. And uh, by the way, first and foremost, Swung Monkey is going to be playing at the uh, K-Rock Free Concert in uh, Irvine Meadows, along with uh, the likes of uh, Homegrown, Blink-182, and MXPX. All bands we've had on the show in like the last uh, three weeks or a month or something like that. Drew, yeah. I'm going to slam that little pocket organizer no. down on your fingers and break them no, off I'm, inside. Don't worry, I'm fine. And then I'm going to sell it for crack. I thought he was playing video games over there. No. Drew, don't take it. Please, would you put the thing down? <laughs> <laughs> it pisses me off that we get paid the same and he's uh, busy uh, taking care of business in here. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I somehow think that if I can stare at it enough, I'll somehow have control over the schedule. It's just insane. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, I want to talk to the band. So um, San Diego's the hometown. Yeah. This is uh, the second... Is this your second record? This is our third record, actually. We did one on our own, and then the second one called Swirl we did with Surf Dog, and then this one's on Hollywood Surf Dog. But this is the first one that's uh, sold, yeah. sold some, moved a few yeah. units, right? Yeah. It's got to be nice. Around the country, yeah. Hey, you guys uh, are brothers. Do you want to kill each other? How you doing, brother? How you doing? Good. No, actually, we're pretty good friends. That's really? That's the best part about being in a band together is that I get to see him as a friend as opposed to being a brother. We really want to have sex with each other. No, I mean, they've they've been on the road touring a lot already. They haven't haven't tried to to kill each other? No, we pretty much come from like the Cleaver household. Wow. Wow. Truthfully and honestly. You know what that means, though. Yeah, we're into the closet lovers. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, the truth. I love everything that is in denial. Our, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've learned that if you come from the uh, uh, Leave It to Beaver, the uh, Ozzy and Harriet family, that means someone that held you down and had sex with you when you're five. <laughs> that's code for that. But yeah. uh, not you, not the Summers <laughs> family. What's your guys' nationality? You uh, look like Hawaiian. something Hawaiian. All right, you got big cabs, <laughs> <Like> something. <laughs> <laughs> you got something going on. The Hawaiian's a nice mix. You got the big cabs. I got the big belly and the big calves. Oh, that's good. I like the Hawaiian guys got the greatest builds. They got big arms, big calves, small waist, but big bellies. Yeah. If they don't get wide, they just start sticking out. It's the pork and beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're doing something to that beer. All right, so Drew? Yeah. We'll take some calls. Good. Uh-uh. What? Mm-hmm. Like a filling or something. Fell out of my mouth. That's nice. mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Spung Monk is here, though. He'll be taking some calls. We'll hear something else off the CD. And uh, I'll give you some tour dates, too, because uh, Spung Monk is coming to a town near you. <laughs> Lo- Who is that? Lorraine. Lorraine? Lorraine. 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 What's going on? You're 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been involved with the Marine now for like the past two years. And it's, it seems like it's just getting worse, even though we both seem to want it to stop, you know? How old is he? He's 27. Started when you were 16? Mm-hmm. Quite a champion, this guy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he's uh, 25, although he's probably, he's a little older than 27, isn't he? No, he's 27. <laughs> How long has he been married? Um, I could, I don't know, probably close to like 10 years, maybe. Does he have kids? Yeah, two. Maureen, come on. What, is he promising he's going to get a divorce? No, not at all. He that's, hates his wife? That's, yeah. And so he tells you? Yeah, so he claims to, yeah. Right. I, we have yet to meet... Uh, Listen, the, uh, if Mother Teresa had a husband who was banging around on her, he would say while he was her. on top of the chick he was banging around on, he'd tell me, what a bitch that Mother Teresa yeah. is. Oh, we man, what a to pain in the ass. It's a woman nag, who's involved nag, in a married nag. man that hasn't heard that. It's 100%. Of course, because he can't, he, he can't get your panties off if he's talking about how much he loves his wife. Mm. Can he? No. The only way this is going to end, Lorraine, is if you end it. Because this, why should he end it? He's using you successfully. You're getting nothing out of this. You must stop. Why? Why, why are you such a? Why are you such a victim? Why? Why uh, would you find this kind of relationship acceptable? I, I don't. I, I mean, I try to. I mean, I. Try why are you so compulsively drawn back to it then? I have no idea. Two years. Yeah. Well. This guy's 25, he's married, he has a couple of kids, he's been married for eight years at this point, uh, when he's 25, and he starts dating a 16-year-old. How old were you when your dad left? No, no, my dad's with me. Really well when he checked out in some way? No, no, me and my dad are really, really close. Right? Have, have you always been that way? Yeah, always. Mm, Doesn't fit. Something, yeah, something isn't working. How about your mom? What's up with her? <clears throat> Me and mom don't get along. She still, she lives with me, but we just don't get along. Okay. All right. Well, good. You got no excuses then. Does your dad live with you? Yeah. But she has no excuses. Get yeah, out of the relationship. Stop it, then you've been you've been duped. <coughs> you shouldn't have any trouble stopping it. Is there some reason you you can't give it up? 
I, I don't know. I mean, I, I seem to always go back. Why? I don't know. Well, we don't know. Well, you obviously have a self-esteem problem. Yeah, other guys interested in you? Um, yeah, but I, I, I'm not. Why? Because I seem to be so hung up on him. I, I don't even, I'm not even interested. All right, see, this is going to be, this is, uh, this will be like what a lot of guys think of uh, the military after they get out of it. Oh, four years wasted. Jesus, what was I thinking? I look back, all I did was uh, get drunk, uh, bang a few hookers, and learn how to uh, clean a machine gun. <laughs> end up painting a lot of stuff i mean you know what i'm saying yeah, she's gonna she, she's been in this thing since she was 16 she's already 18 she'll probably hang around for another year and a half before she finally severs it and then she's gonna look back and her her her, her almost her sort of youthful dating years were Gone. spent with a guy uh, some uh, slob that was married you know I, I mean if indeed she's healthy which she claims to be and we don't know really what the reality is there but um she doesn't have involved parents. I mean, if her parents are involved with her life, there's no way she could go on like this. I mean, at the very least, she needs somebody who, a parent at this age, yeah. to help her contain those behaviors. Well, maybe she's just a little nutty on her own. Drew yeah, has to think, be. Drew's could got be. three no, kids, be. so right. he thinks uh, all this stuff has to be, there has to be a cause. No, 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 don't let me give that impression. But but in the vast majority of cases, the patterns that we see, certainly there is that. All right, I'm with you. Naomi. Hey. Hey, 25. Yeah. You're on the strong uh, monkey. <clears throat> Hey guys, hey. catch you a little here and there. Um, okay. Have yeah. you heard that tune before? Uh, no, they haven't played it out here. Where are you calling from? Uh, Boston. All right, they should do that. Mm, they should. I think right. they just did, really. Uh -huh. oh, it's a good thing about this show. Is yeah. We can force songs on the radio stations that would normally... We we could... Well, we wouldn't be on, like, a Christian music station or something like that. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Tell me what's up. <laughs> okay, well, my question's that um, I've heard that women can often... Uh, spontaneously abort and yes. not know it. True. That's true? Yes. I mean, okay. most, most, nearly most pregnancies end in the first trimester and oftentimes without ever even knowing you were pregnant. All right, but under, Drew, you should be a politician with your with your wording. Nearly most. Because I don't know. Which is the, what, is that 44%? I, I don't have the that's, data in my head, that's why I said it that way. All right, but less than half. Nearly most Around is half. less than half. Around half. Call. Around half. Okay, okay but the reason I asked was because I thought this might have happened to me because um, the okay I had sex about a um, month ago it was about a week after my last period and it wasn't exactly safe sex but I'm not going to get into that anyway um, so my period started yesterday and I would have assumed that nothing isn't was great about it isn't except your, isn't your instinct when somebody says we're not going to get into that to say <laughs> It's, it's not something that happened. It was a year ago. Now I just want to get my paycheck. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> All right, so anyway, you, you had your period. Yeah, and uh, I wouldn't have thought anything odd except this morning I discharged a like a clear fluid. It was like about an ounce of fluid. It's oh. nothing that I'd experienced. That could before. have been the next president. No no tissue or anything like that you could say. It would only be a couple weeks old, so who knows? I mean, you wouldn't see anything uh, at that point, so who knows? I, okay. It's very difficult to tell. I certainly would get a pregnancy test to make sure that it wasn't some sort of bleeding a, a, around a pregnancy and there can still be retained products of conception that could be detected through the pregnancy. Drew, are you serious mm -hmm. that like a half of the pregnancies end this I, way? I, I look and you tomorrow. don't know I'll that you're saying you don't know you're pregnant. Mm, it's not infrequent that that would be the case. Now, I'm not saying half of them end spontaneously without you knowing it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying a good a good percentage end in the first trimester. All right. Has this is the number gone up with um, environmental pollution and stuff like that? T V and microwaves? I don't believe so, but I can't answer that. Those fruit roll ups? I don't think so. But yeah. um, I didn't realize that they do have these uh, chlamydia screens that you were asking for where you can just wipe the vagina and uh, get it. Really? Yep. Have you talked about getting it over the counter? Yeah. That that will probably I I believe that will happen, sir. Like um uh, like like they test like for pregnancy tests. I mean, a woman goes home, she uh, just uh, pees uh, on the strip, right? Mm -hmm. And then the strip tells you whether you're pregnant. Well, I suggested a few weeks ago, why don't you have this for venereal disease? You could just uh, take the take the strip, wipe it along the uh, potentially infected area, and if it turns uh, green, that, that's your green light for sex. But if it turns red, 
And you're saying they have that for well, hold up. They do that for chlamydia. I brought all the pills for use for postcoital contraception. Really? Emergency contraception. True. My next move is to work it into the sleeve of a jacket so a guy can figure it out right on the date, you know? <laughs> Oops, I uh, drop my coaster, reaches down on the table, makes a quick wipe, uh, checks the sleeve of the jacket with some kind of little black light. <laughs> so Ultimately, see, <laughs> see, figuring out the future, you Ultimately, know? Ultimately, something like bones from uh, from Star Trek, just something wave over her. <laughs> yeah, some sort of venereal scanner. <laughs> yeah, one, like uh, like at the airport when... Sound. When uh, when you knock uh, when you trip the metal detector and they pull you aside and again mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of trouble with that. Think of all the things we might be able to detect somewhere with that. Oh, one. it's going to be a great day. Uh, Bipolar, uh, alcohol lasts forty eight hours. Yeah, cocaine. That's good. And then the women come out with a small penis meter and we're all screwed. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, not all of us. <laughs> all right, you bastard. Saw Drew's penis in the airport once. So hurt. Uh, not at the not in the bathroom either. Was, uh, he had to check it on. Right in the baggage <laughs> claim there. We're waiting for it. We're running late. It got caught in the metal detector. <laughs> yeah, he's got a hoop on it. I go right for the <laughs> penis. I never let it go. <laughs> Suzanne? Yes? What's going on? You're 23. You're on a sprung monkey. <laughs> hey, guys. I've never heard of you, but I just heard the song, and I think it's great. Where are you hey. calling from? Orlando. Well, you should have heard it then. This is good. I haven't heard it. What's good? But are we, we're spreading the music all over the country? Is that... Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's good. It is good, yeah. Thanks, guys. What's it supposed to do? Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, let's get, it was, was, we like it, too, that's why. Yeah, yeah. If it was something bad, you know, like, um... um Say it. Uh, no, like, like the venereal disease oh. or something, we, we <laughs> want to spread it. venereal disease? No, no, no you're, that's you're the, the, other, you're yeah. the antithesis that's of the venereal worse. disease. <laughs> Suzanne, yeah. what's the deal? Um, all right, uh, my boyfriend and I are about to get engaged, and um, he's real sweet. I love him to death, but uh, my mom keeps asking me every single time, do I really love him? Because she perceives that I, she, her perception is that I don't love him. Why? I, I don't know. And, um, and I know I love him, but it's getting to the point now where I'm starting to worry that she's seeing something that I'm not. Neil, is, is it sounds like mom got screwed over at some did your mom get divorced uh, get married early um yeah my brother and my sister are my half brother and sister no, no. she was married before uh, why, why do you pick up on that no no adam yeah and don't you take credit for what i'm picking up on so <laughs> you didn't pick up on any of that <laughs> because I, I i get that she's seeing something but i'm not getting she sings the she's not telling suzanne you're making the same mistake i'm made right she's not she no she's just projecting i mean when people um people do that that's just the way the human psyche works i i heard her mom complaining about do you really love this guy make sure you love him i don't think you love him and that said to me that she was in her position at some point and ended up getting screwed over but how do you know that suzanne isn't actually acting out just like mom how is he Which financially in his aspirations towards the future that's a good point is he a crackhead? No, not at all. No. No. What, not at all. How long you two been together? Um, seven months. Seven, going on eight months. What was her? Uh, was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I know. Three. We're going to have a long engagement, probably about how, a year and a half. How? What is it she's concerned about? Particularly? Uh, she won't really tell me. She'll just say uh, every day. She'll ask me, "Well, do you really love him? I, I just don't think you love him." And I just I don't well, know how to her, respond. So to your mom's either. deal. She got married early, had a kid or two. Yes. And it fell apart. Yes. And so she doesn't want to see you make that same mistake. Right. But I, I don't think I'm making the same mistake, but I just, I'm getting worried now. I'm doubting myself. Hmm, that's Basically good what it's coming about. down to, that it, when I'm with him, I feel wonderful. I, it's great. I'm in love. But then I get, you know, I get home and start talking to her and just... What issues start making you uncomfortable? She must say bring up something that's particular. No, no, she doesn't really bring up anything. She just it's it's the same question over and over again. Do you really love him? Do you and she just keeps telling me that she doesn't think right. I love him. Why are you going home at twenty three? <laughs> <laughs> Another good point. Please. Um, it's way too old to be going home. You guys aren't going home. <laughs> are you are the Summers brothers going home? <laughs> unless, unless their parents now have a place in Maui. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Well, oh, we're, we're a close family, so. No. Hey, 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 Suzanne. You're in that's, denial. That's called an enmeshed family. <laughs> you can't get out and individuate at, at an appropriate age. That's not close. That's caught. But here's the thing. Uh, all you people that are living at home or parents are paying insurance on your car or they're, pay they're paying your thing through college, when you let people do stuff for you, you also let them dictate things to you, meaning if, if they're paying your rent, then they're going to get their two cents in on what you should do with your relationship or your career. When you're totally independent, 
you may listen to their advice, but uh, believe me, they're not beating you over the head with it because they can't, because you're independent. And you wouldn't listen to them uh, just like you wouldn't listen to some other, uh, the guy who lived underneath you in your apartment trying to tell you what to do with your life. Well, you would take their input and you'd take it objectively and try to do, do but something. But it's the it. same parents, you know, the ones that uh, cut their kids loose at 19 and don't pay for their car insurance, don't try to tell them things either. Not, they might not like this, not every day in and day out. Not in a control right. and codependent way. you got to get out of there, Suzanne. Was, was your mom's first, uh, here, here it is, was your mom's first husband an alcoholic? Um, I really don't know. So, I don't okay, think so. Check that out. Uh -huh. Check that out. And then, does your boyfriend have any history with alcohol or momentum with alcohol? Not at all. Any family history in his side? Um, he doesn't have the greatest family, but... <laughs> Or family history, but so no. Check out and see. Just, just find out. Go on a, go on a uh, information seeking mission. I bet you'll find out your the first pe husband was alcoholic. And I bet your fiance has got an alcoholic parent. That's what I bet. Does she just have a track record? It's just such a codependent situation with that mom. Okay, my kid turns fifteen. He's out of the house. He's right out of the house. <laughs> Gone. You know what I'm going to do with him? I'm going to put him out in the yard so I can keep an eye on him for a couple of years. See how he's going. Him Chain him to the tree. <laughs> That's right. So bring some leftovers out. To, um, yeah, uh, your uh, your new mama, the playmate, she couldn't finish this, so uh, we're gonna oh. drop this off. That's all right. Toughen him up a little, right, Drew? <laughs> Drew's gonna raise his kids in the basement. He's working, he's digging it now, right? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna create a whole artificial environment down there. They'll think they're out in the real world. Yeah, they'll be trees, but they'll just be painted on a concrete <laughs> reinforced wall. It'll be sort of bunker living. All right, uh, Drew. Yeah. No, right, just checking. She's still there. We're gonna talk to Emmeline. She wants to know how to help. She's well, how to help her have less painful sex with her boyfriend is the question. Emmeline, fourteen. Okay, great. Wow. All right, this is something we can sink our our uh, older teeth into. A sprung monkey, of course, is uh, still here and will be here when we come back. <laughs> Hi, this is David Spade, and when I'm driving around listening to the radio, if there's absolutely nothing on any other station, I listen to Loveline with Adam and Drew, because I'm naughty. Yes, he is. Mike and Steve Summers are both here from Sprung Monkey. Mr. Funny Face is the name of the CD that's uh, making all the noise. Dr. Drew's out of the room, but uh, he's meandering back to the studio. <laughs> All right, here it comes now. Let me give a couple of tour dates for Sprung Monkey. Starting tomorrow at the uh, Irvine Meadows K-Rock Free Show, which sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. Orange County, school's out, homegrown, Blink-182, MXPX, and, uh, of course, Sprung Monkey. What time does that start tomorrow? Huh? I think doors are at 11. Mm. You know, really actually, the really uh, weather's going to be good. I, I think it's been kind of... It's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be warm, but it's not going to be miserable. Yeah, it's going to be a wind blowing. Yeah. Join yeah, us on the lawn. Yeah, I'll be on the lawn starting to fire. August uh, 26th, they're going to be in Portland. 27th, Seattle. 29th, Cleveland. Well, that's a jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's not up north. Uh, September 3rd, they're going to be in D.C. September 12th, they're going to be in Cincinnati. The 16th, they'll be in Wichita. And... Uh, L.A. on the 25th, and uh, the 24th and 26th will be in their uh, hometown of uh, San Diego. San Diego. Diego. Better than that, we're doing a Conan O'Brien next Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tune in. Should have mentioned that, too. Andy. That's a good show. You know, the thing that sucks if you're uh, Andy <laughs> is I, I met him. Uh, a time or two in person, and he's about six foot tall, mm -hmm. and yeah. not nearly as chunky as he looks. Conan, on the other hand, is about six six, and so. In comparison, Conan looks like a guy, he looks my height, looks 6'2", and Andy looks 5'8 and fat. Yeah. <laughs> I would uh, have him, like, uh, sawed off at the knees or something if I was Andy. Can you imagine how miserable you'd be to have, like, a tall, let's just say you're a little bit short and a little bit chunky, and you got this bean pole as a, as a host making you look that much, that much wider. That's his job, though. I think he's All happy right. to be there. Well, okay. <laughs> I don't want to explore too much. It was just uh, when I met him, I couldn't believe he, he was felt and tall. Wow. And, I mean, he was six foot. <laughs> and uh, he looks uh, like Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. <laughs> the show looks like he's going to fall off that chair of his and uh, crack into a million pieces. All right, so that's Tuesday. All right, Andrew? Two. Emily. Uh -huh. Hey, wait a minute. No. Four wait, I want to turn to Bamford just a second. Yeah. Uh, San Diego, uh, born, and, born and raised, right? Um, no, Hawaii. Oh, but, uh, born in Hawaii. Been there, been there pretty much forever. San Diego is definitely hometown to us. Was uh, somebody in the military? Yeah, father. In the Navy? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Absolutely. Uh, Went over and got himself a Hawaiian bride. Good thinking. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Is he out now? He's out now. 
They throw him out, or he, he was actually out? in the band, saxophone for the Navy band. Really? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's good thinking. He did his twenty years blowing the horn, and then got out as quick as he could. You know how Vietnam vets wake up and they think they're a rice paddy. He wakes up and he thinks he's like at a military funeral or some. You know, he just might, he must go insane with that. Ah, uh, oh wait a minute, Emmeline. Emmeline? Yeah. Uh, you're 14. Yeah. Sex, sex hurts. Yes. How old's your boyfriend? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, now let's not judge. Let's not judge yet. I'm not yes. judging Emily. I'm Get judging that a-hole that's uh, uh, with her. He's not a boyfriend, Emily. Not a boyfriend. He's, he's a, a convict. Uh, he, he's 30, 37? Yes. And uh, how long you kids been dating? I'm still When you were 13? No. All right. Well, let's get to the chase here. What what happened? Well, he orchid my school. And oh. Did he rape you initially? No. How old were you when you were first raped? Twelve. Twelve? What happened before that? Nothing. Mm. What happened with the rape? It was my godfather. Your godfather? Mm-hmm. Uh... What happened before that? Something. Something. Something with your dad? I don't think so. Where's your dad? My parents are divorced. Parents are divorced? Mm-hmm. Um, oh. I, I haven't, uh, I'm not trying to make light here, but um, I haven't checked the Godfather uh, handbook or charter lately, but I'm thinking uh, raping of uh, your young ward is probably not... Not included. Not part of the plan. Yeah. Ellen, does anybody know this is happening to you? No. Does anybody know about the Godfather? No. Have you ever been in a psychiatric hospital? No. What's the guy do at school? He's a pastor. A pastor? Yes. Mm. And um, oh, it's just unbelievable. <clears throat> How do they? You know, they just spot him, don't they? These guys. I, yeah. Well, well, one thing we figured out from doing this show uh, night after night is guys smell the victims coming. I mean, they know they know what easy prey is. Just like uh, the hyenas can figure out uh, what the, the the weak in the herd that fall behind, they can catch right up to them. It sounds cool. It's like, oh, the thing's already got a messed up hoof, and now it's got hyenas on them uh, too. But it, this, unfortunately. Uh, we're part of this animal kingdom, and, and I think guys work about the same same way. Which well, is, when it comes to this stuff. <coughs> well, it's like they're, they're it's, predators in their own way, but it's sexual predators. But it's like hyenas. Like, why run our ass off chasing a healthy one down? We'll just get a straggler. Well, because they're not going to get a healthy thirteen-year-old to do this. Right. All right. So, I just want to find out, Emmeline. We're, Drew and I know from doing this show that 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 there was something going on before your godfather. At age twelve, either somebody physically you know, was it physically rough with you, or emotionally abusive, or sexually abusive, or all. I have problems remembering things. Uh, you know, that sometimes means something. Something. Do you have periods now where you blank out and don't know what you're doing for a while, and come back with different clothing and things, and don't remember how you got it? No. Nothing like that's happening. Do you ever think about hurting yourself? No. Okay. You doing any drugs or anything like that? No. Okay. Well, Emily, you're being raped now by this guy, basically. I mean, this is this is an adult having sex with you. I mean, of course it hurts, and there's nothing that can be done to make it less painful other than making you stop doing this. Well, what do you what do you do? I mean, is this regular? Do you do you go over to his his um his church? Where do they live? Do you go to his apartment or something? No. Mm-hmm. The rectory. The rectory. Ooh, you have that's a rectory. I hear about it all the time. I don't know what it is. Is that where they play like it's a place bingo where they, and stuff? Sex with twelve-year-olds. Yeah, but I think uh, when they were building it, they had they had different plans for it. I'm not sure if that's uh, what they were thinking of. Emmeline? Yes. All right. So you realize your victim. This guy's a criminal, and uh, we got to put an end to this, who, right? Can, who would you be able to tell about this? That's the first order of business. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I was in the school at one time. You, you're not in that school anymore? No, I, I just started. 
first term. There's somebody. You got to speak up a little. I'm you need I'm to tell trouble. somebody, and you need to know that when when the time comes, this guy's going to deny it like crazy. I mean, you saw the President of the United States deny something, and uh, that's what guys do. Um, it's funny. I was the opposite. I used to brag about stuff I didn't do. You know what I mean? Somehow it doesn't surprise me. Right. But if you're in the position to lie in the other fashion, I suspect you would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm lying my hands off. Um, so, Emily, you've got to tell people before you threaten this guy or anything else. I mean, you, you've got to tell an adult, a teacher, somebody you well, trust. Let me, let me just ask you a quick question. You're calling because there's a part of you that knows this is wrong and this shouldn't go on, right? Kind of. Hey, Emily? Yeah. I, I know you're victim and everything, but I need you to uh, step up to the plate here, get right into that phone, and jump on these things a little faster. Uh, you, you do kind of know it's wrong. Yeah. That's that hostility. You're not going to get that chance. Oh, okay. <laughs> I tried. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you want to do something about it, or you just want to um, sort of have be the play the role of the victim for forever. Yeah, because b believe me, one sad uh, truth we've learned on this show is uh, he he'll, he's not the first and he won't be the last either. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Can I give you a phone number to call? Yes. Would you take it? Yes. What? I'm scared to call him. Well, you called us, and it's the same thing as calling calling here, just to get somebody to talk to and get well, some support. It's I mean, better. Calling, I mean, they're nicer. Well, we only have a certain amount of time. Right. And... Uh, I mean, all right, listen, here's, here's what you promised us. Call this number and just talk to somebody. They won't even know what you don't have to use your real name. They won't know where you're calling from. There's no danger. You understand? We're not. And, and ladies in the other room, can we take her number and follow up with her? And we'll be a, try to be a source of support for you to get you to the point where you blow the whistle on this and uh, start getting treatment for the miserable abuse you've gone through your whole life. I mean, this is a pattern that you're stuck in now at 14 is not going to change. All right, Emily. Yeah, there are ways to change the outcome. Sure, I'll just put her on hold. You go give her the number off the air. All right. All right. God damn. Oh, that's the great. The child abuse hotline. That's a wonderful. Me. That's wonderful. If anything happens to us, you will take care. Isn't that isn't that the the deal you make with the godparent? Oh yeah. He took care of it. Yeah. I mean, he was. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, uh you know the the thing. Uh, you know, part of the show. Is for me is uh, part of it is is uh, like sort of unbelievable. It's it's bizarre. It was very bizarre. It's bizarre that a, a you know your your goddad, the guy who's basically the closest to your family and the closest uh, the closest friend of the family, and like theoretically going to take care of you if uh, you two are cleaned out in a car crash, uh, does this on a twelve year old. But I guess it's more bizarre when the dad does it, and it's more bizarre when the grandpa does it, and I don't know. Um, she said the pastor is doing it. Right. That's even more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Although, well, we have heard of that before. All right, Drew, you're going to talk to her off the air? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take uh, some phone calls when we come back. Like, uh, John was born without a thyroid. Wait a minute, John. <laughs> that doesn't sound but like he, a good he, he, time. But he's been on hold forever and was on last night. Let's get him done, and then we'll go and talk to some of these calls. No, no. i got to take, like, a big cans call or something. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm running low. You understand, Drew? I'm what this close one? to killing myself. Uh, Chris, uh, 16, found girlfriend sleeping with best friend, and uh, two days later, girlfriend asked him to join in. Okay, now we're yeah, talking love line. Ball ball. This is meat and potato. <laughs> Sprung monkeys here, and then we'll get to the uh, guy without the thyroid. And Drew, you talk to um, yeah. uh, Emmeline off the air. All right, Steve Summers are here from Sprung Monkey. Drew's here from Pasadena, and uh, it's time to uh, rock on with the love line. Rock on. Hey, you guys, uh, well, you didn't, did you grow up in, in Hawaii, or did you grow up in San Diego? Uh, I was there in the beginning of life, but not enough to where I can remember Steve it. Steve was born in the pink hospital. San Diego forever. When, uh, in a pink hospital? Yeah. Yeah, military yeah, hospital. On Oahu? Tripler. No. Tripler hospital. Really? Oh, yeah, next time you're there. All right, all right. You know, I, I, you Pick know. Up on the hill in a nice pink dome. I know it's pathetic. I've been to Hawaii once. I spent the entire seven days there in a strip bar. I just, <laughs> yes. I found this place called, uh, the Rose Tattoo. And go. it was uh, spectacular. So and, well, I, I I had this feeling like, hey, I can look at a picture of the beach, but when am I going to find a strip club like this? What was so great about it? That picture of a clam. They, yeah. <laughs> they had a. Uh, well, first off, they didn't. They didn't have any cover. You could just walk right in and sit down. Secondly, they had this fire pole, 
and uh, the strippers were upstairs, and like every five minutes, a siren went off, and another one slid down the pole. So you just, I positioned myself at the bottom of the pole, you know, and I just stood there, and I was just staring up at the top of the pole, like uh, it was like manna from heaven, you know, just convenient. women in thongbacks just dropping out of, uh, dropping out of the sky. So it's tremendous. It was just the symbolism that, that was fantastic. They get a lot closer in Hawaii, too, don't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what it is about uh, L.A., but whenever you talk to someone who's either from, you know, Hawaii or Seattle or Vancouver, whatever, the, the, the strip bar scene seems to be a little bit better over there. And I, and I, I tend to think it's, it's this. Too many a-holes in L.A., too many guys getting drunk and, and uh, falling on stage and groping and grabbing and whatnot, so they, they start laying down all these rules. Hey, I was talking to someone. <laughs> I was talking to someone today about uh, Taco Bell, old school Taco Bell, back when they had like the Bell Beefer and everything. And Cheritos. Cheritos. <laughs> oh yeah, with the three olives. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. And I used to, I said to him, you know, the old Taco Bells, they all used to have a fire pit in the front yeah, of them. That's true. It was about four feet yes. off the ground. It had that lava rock in it. It was about five six feet in circumference and a whole a whole. Uh, and it's been twenty years. But I thought to myself. Could you imagine that going on today? Some idiot would set their a four-year-old niece's um, carry-on crib on the edge of that thing while they were ordering uh, burritos for the softball team. The thing would fall in to the fire pit, and then there'd immediately be a lawsuit. That's what so so the point is, there's so many idiots and a-holes uh, running around now that we can't do anything anymore. There could be nothing. You, you know what I mean? There's got to be like a guard railing and a yellow stripe around everything, and you can't do every, anything. But there's not enough idiots and a-holes in Hawaii yet that they've screwed up the strip scene. <laughs> so I'd like to go there and lead the idiot and a-hole charge. <laughs> they're all tourists, too, so they're already ex accepting the fact that they're going to lose their money. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, very, they're very generous. And a lot of the women come from, like, here and go on tour over there. Chris? Yeah. You're 16. Yes, I am. You found you found out your girlfriend is sleeping with your best friend, or you just found them? I found them. Describe the scene. Okay, um, I just got my license, and me and Tammy have been going out for four years, and I love her to death. And, well, uh, it, it had been like a month before her parents had found out that I had been sleeping with her, and I was in hot water with them, and she didn't want me to see her anymore, so what she did was... Uh, try to break us up so we decided to meet down like two houses down the road it was my best friend's house and I always met her there to pick her up from then on out and uh, one day I went over there to pick her up and this is well this is only like five days ago this is last Saturday and I had just got my license and I was all hyped up and everything and I went over to pick her up and the next thing I know I walked in because I heard the radio on in, in uh, his bedroom and uh, nobody's at the front door so I just walked in and the next thing I know when I went to his bedroom they were on their bed together and she saw me she was like oh my god what are you doing get out of here and I was I was just very PO'd and I walked out and I drove off and so two days later she calls me up and she's like Chris I'm so sorry and I was like well I don't want to hear it I think we should just break up and she's like well we, you don't have to do that and I was like well I know I love you and everything like this and she's like well why don't you just join us and I was like oh my god and so I just hung up on her and I haven't talked to her since and I don't know if I should just break up with her or really or if we should just work out her problems or what. I don't want to break up with her. I love what's, her what's her history? Oh. There's never been a history. I mean, she's a schoolgirl, so I guess she'd be one of the wild ones. And, uh, I mean, but yeah. 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 she goes to a Catholic school. with the pastor? What does that mean? No, something. Well, first off, her name's Tammy, so that's trouble. <laughs> oh, Tammy yeah. or Cammy? Both yeah. trouble. Or Sammy. Well, really? She's never, done, she's never done this to me before. I mean, she's always been faithful as far as I've known. Are you her only boyfriend? Yeah, so far. We went, we went out for four years. Four years? How old is she? She's uh, 15. She'll be 16 in about two months. She was 11 and you were 12 when you started yeah. dating? Yeah, well, we didn't think anything of it until we really got into it, and I didn't start sleeping with her until about six months ago. We really got into it, and her parents found out, and they were just uh, ready to bite my head off. It seems a weird response again. when he <laughs> caught her, get out. Yeah. Not I'm sorry or oh my God, but she told you to get out and you actually left? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. It's probably been going on for a while. Yeah. I think yeah. there's plenty of girls, brother. Just move on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Spur Monkey, you guys rock. Thanks, brother. Thanks. At least no one's heard of this. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, listen, your, your rock idols are telling you to move on. Yeah. I think yeah. that might be a good idea, but... Move on or move in. Don't put up with it. Yeah. I suggest I mean, you move on. I, I wasn't sure whether to break up with it or not, because, I mean, we were going out for four years. We really had something going. Mm. But, I mean, it's just, it's just what she came up with. 
to ask me to join them in a threesome like that. Yeah, just the way you came up with yeah. it. This all doesn't fit together for me. But uh, <laughs> well, so here's the, unless your best friend's a chick, uh, you're not getting in any threesome. Look, this is a bogus call. Yeah, this yeah. is a bogus call. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, you didn't believe it. No, it was, but, he, but he thought it out very well. He did think he it did. out, Chris. Yeah, we want to thank you for thinking it out. Yeah. For, for acting it out, never. Yeah, but we don't believe you. Yeah. Thanks. You don't what? No. We don't believe the call. You don't believe the call, huh? No. And you've never heard of us either. <laughs> no, I've heard of us. That's strike three. That was, I believe that. Yeah, when Chris. he said that, I believe that, as a matter of fact, that he liked you guys. Uh, I believe uh, you, Chris. I, I have one more question, though. Uh, yeah. For Spring Monkey, are you guys going to play at Edge Fest? So, so quickly, just, just where's, where's all that, that acting behind? <laughs> where's the Edge Fest? Oh, Fest Chris, at? thank you for, for thinking it out clearly before uh, we get the story. Edge though. Fest was in Minneapolis. <laughs> But I don't know that it's in Minneapolis anymore, although there's an edge all over the place. The way radio works, which is weird to me, I don't know how this works, but there's like a, a an edge and a rock and a, power. And a, and a beat and a power. And, they're, and they're, there's one in Orlando and there's one in Phoenix yeah. and they, they, they like sell this moniker or something. I, I don't know how it works, but we used... And we're not on on on, on the edge in Minneapolis, no. no that was change, like uh, three years ago. <laughs> hey, well, listen, I'm, I'm curious. The Chris was bogus. Okay, let's, yeah, let's he was. Be clear about that. But now, now, what are you going to advise people? Because that was a well thought out story. It just, it just yeah. didn't, didn't. He didn't did his fit, homework, but it just feeling, didn't work. Well, it made you think he was bogus. What? It just the affect isn't there. It just, I just felt empty. And this is, if you really that were all true, there would have been a whole lot of emotion behind all that. And he actually wouldn't have been so focused on the kind of detail he gave us. It was more about how miserable, how, how upset he is. He wasn't upset. Well, it happened five days ago. A girl allegedly yeah. has been four dating years, for four years. His best friend out. was uh, humping away. And he calls her to include him in the way. He would have been just, he would have been just bewildered as hell. Yeah. All right. Um, so here, here's the deal for those who do uh, have real calls and have gone through the same thing, which is when somebody does this, they are flawed. And, and when people are flawed, uh, they're, they're bound to screw up again. But people aren't flawed. After four years, you don't find out about flaws four years down the line. No, no. It, it's 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 going to be a lot of rocky trouble on a flawed person with a relationship, and unless you are flawed and have to hang in with that in some way, and even, that would have a whole different quality to it too. You know, like with the way he presented the call, right? It would have been I can't understand why she's always doing this, and I I love her so much, and why isn't that enough? And mm, no, All that right. wasn't that either. All right, John, you're 14. Drew has a spidey sense that tingles. <sighs> It sure doesn't tingle when he's uh, droning on for a half hour and people are turning off the radio. That he That's has no sense of. No, nope, he couldn't tell, couldn't tell that. But he certainly knows it when some uh, kid's uh, girlfriend wasn't getting banged. <laughs> John? <laughs> Ooh, what is that? Darth uh, Vader here. John? Is that him sleeping, Mike? Yeah, he just sleeps. Sounds like he's wow. masturbating. He's just sleeping. He's been on hold. It, there he is. Hello? He was sleeping. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wake up. Hello? John, what's going oh, on? Oh, my God. Hello? There we go. <laughs> hey, I'm with you, brother. I wish I could just pull the cot out right here, John. John. Hey, guys. What's up? Not much. Uh, hello? We're just what's listening on? to you sleep there. Yeah, I was asleep. Been on hold forever. <laughs> You're right. That was last night. No, no, he was on hold 90 minutes last night. All right, all right. You know, when everyone, that's the magic words. When everyone, so, when someone complains about being on hold, they go right back on hold. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, John? Um, well, I was born without a thyroid, and from the day I was born, the well, actually, this wasn't discovered till I was about five or six months old, and by that time, there should have been a lot of development physically and just physically, and the doctor said for for my life I would be short and stocky, yeah. and um, to this day he's pretty much right. And I was wondering if that can affect the size of my penis. Uh, I don't. I would doubt that. It's it's really something. I mean, it, in its full blown state called cretinism. And oh, yeah, that's, he said something about that last time I. Yeah, and it, but him. but when it's really cretinism, it affects your brain function and everything else too. Is that when you look like uh, Quasimodo? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, you kind of look yeah. like that. And, uh, but so you you develop some of the physical features. How come they? How come they, this day and age? I can't believe they missed that. Well, they, they, um, I was going in for a random blood work, and they just discovered that something wasn't right, and 
Uh, they gave me an iodine shot to, and the I still want to, I think. That's, that's, that's Drew, you wouldn't miss that. Hell no. I'm not Hell no. That's, that's, to me, that seems so routine. I can't imagine them missing it at five months. Uh, well, yeah. how, how's the penis hanging, John? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not huge from are you, what I know. Are you, are you, a, are you a, developing normally sexual characteristics like hair growth and that sort of thing? Well, I've got hair, you know. I don't mean on your head. I mean your armpits, your chest, that sort of thing happening. Yeah, armpit, not oh. chest yet. Okay. Yeah, right. Whoever said all men were created equal has never been in a locker room. R <laughs> really? You're not you're not hanging with the, the rest of the boys? Well, I mean, huh? How you I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm in the locker room. It's just... You know, I'm embarrassed to be in there. Right, just it, it, give it some more time, John. Listen, your, your Packer's not big at 14. That's right. It isn't. I was thinking back on a friend. I, was, I don't know why I was thinking about this. God knows. Don't scare I, me. I need to clean my brain out. I got so much crap. You know, my brain is like uh, some uh, storage locker that's got filled, filled with too much useless crap. But I was thinking the other night about one of my good friends who has a big penis. And that's I, nice. I've known well, that's that, nice. You can put that on a card. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't you, you bastard. And I was, I, I've known the guy since I've been like seven years old. So, you know, I've seen enough of the guy's penis. Smells funny, too. But I saw that, I, I remember, see, I remember the guy's penis was never big. Until it was. Until it was. Right. And, it, and it wasn't like in the ninth grade or anything. Right, it, right. It, it came on later. And then it you, got you, sharp. You go better took my eye out once. We, we got to go for a break. Oh, okay. Hey, that's, uh, that's the radio show. We done? Ten second break, pal. Oh, Christ. Another hour? Yeah. All right. That's what our listeners are saying. <laughs> no, that's not our listeners are saying that. It's other radio stations. Is that feelings? Yeah. Mike and Steve Summers are both here from Sprung Monkey. Mr. Funny Face is the name of the CD. I don't have the CD. Can you get me the... Do we got the CD in there, Mike? Somebody run that in here? I like to, uh, I like to look at things, you know? <laughs> Shiny <laughs> things, you know, Joe? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, you, you ready to uh, rock on? We missing anything? Who's coming up uh, next week? Oh, Natasha Leone from uh, Slums of Beverly Hills, and uh, everyone says I love you. That uh, Woody oh. Allen movie. She's real nice. We are on the TV show. Howard Jones is coming up from. Uh, he's coming up from the grave. Right? Who is that? <laughs> Howard Jones. Well, it was uh, isn't that Howard Jones? Yeah, that was uh, the uh, yeah he was. Drew, they uh, K-Rock played the hell out of Howard Jones okay. about ten years ago. Right. I'm guessing he's got something else going on. All right, and uh, Dana Gould will be in here. a uh, real funny stand-up. All right. Yeah, I want to say thank you for people who have been sending me all these faxes and emails about uh, my question about why humans evolutionarily evolved in such a way as to create, recreate their childhood relationships. And uh, just thank you. I would say for those people who send them, please right. don't focus. I wanna, I, I'd like to ask those people to uh, take a baseball bat to their computer and stop sending that. <laughs> well, I've, I've read all of them, so I don't think they haven't read. All right, well, no more. Because, well, uh, uh, because Drew three brings it up every night, and then the guests are yeah. confused. You don't know what the hell Drew is talking about. Drew has and then they fact the email twenty more and a hundred more. Right, and and the majority, seventy five percent of them, I'd say, or about. Uh, I'll tell you why they why they act out in these uh, abusive relationships because they were abused when they were kids. You see, when they're abusing their kids, then they go out and pursue that in their adult life. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the cool. <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way, but there's nothing you thought of that we didn't think of first <laughs> about anything. There were a couple of them that were good. Oh, really? really quite good, yeah. All right. Stuff we didn't think of? Yep. I don't believe it. Dave. Oh, uh, yeah. You're 15. What's going on? Yeah, I think I'm addicted to masturbation. Yeah. I'm doing it like three, four times a day, and I've been doing it since I was 10 years old. With with what kind of results at the 10? <laughs> well, like, well, I was like watching like this porn, and I was like bouncing up and down on the couch, and like I just got this really weird... How did you, how did you get exposed to porn at 10? Oh, my friend... Mm. He was 10, too. Well, my kids are going back to the basement tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was on, like, pay-per-view, you know? And I got this really weird... Yeah, you got to get, like, a grow light or something down there for them, because uh, they'll be frightened when they see the sun I heard in their great, 20s. I heard a great cartoon that I forget what magazine it was in, but it was uh, showing these parents there sitting in front of the TV with their with their five-year-old child, and the caption is, and now a message from the President of the United States. And the parents jump for the child to cover his ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad, but true. Yeah, it is true. I, listen, i got to tell you something. That's what we do in our house. Dave? Yeah. Well, you pay. You, you, you get the old pair to jump on the kid's ears, right? Yeah, you don't get up yourself. Turn the sound off. Uh, three or four times a day. Well, like now, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of bored with it now, and I don't really like it much anymore, but like, I don't know why. You can't stop. I used to be like so into it and everything. I gotta tell you, when I was 15, I was just falling in love with myself, sexually. I mean, 
Uh, I couldn't imagine being burnt out on masturbation at 15. I'm 20. Uh, I'm, I'm 34. I'm discovering new new parts about myself I didn't know about. <clears throat> Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have a Steve? Want to know if you had a, a girlfriend? Um, not at the moment. You should try to get one. Well, yeah. Once you once you yeah, like when I, yeah when I get one, it kind of like stops for a while, but then like it starts up again after. You got a moderation. You know, beat it a couple times a day and get her a couple times too. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'd pull a groin if I was on that schedule. <laughs> All right, you, what? My, you know, why getting exposed to porns at ten and starting to masturbate at ten? I, I mean, what, what was your upbringing like? What was your family like? Perfect. 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 In what way perfect? Oh, I guess my parents are a little overprotective, mm-hmm. kind of like you do. How did you manage? And I really want to know. How did you manage to get all the porn at ten if they were so protective? Um, at night and stuff. Hmm. Do you feel that whole experience affected you in some way? Seeing uh, that kind of stuff at such a young age? Not really. Did, did you have any sexual experience before the age of 10? No. Was no. there alcohol in your family anywhere? No. Are right. you sure? Positive. All right, Dave, slow down then on the masturbation. Yeah, then stop. Believe me, you'll, you'll, um, you'll, you'll fall in love all over again if you knock it off for a week. When people are really hypersexual like that, and particularly you know, women when they can't stop masturbating, we found that that's one of the behaviors that manifest when people have been sexually abused. Yeah. I believe that seeing sexual activity before the age of 12 can be rather traumatizing and is very similar to a sexual abuse type of situation. Mm. So maybe that triggered some of this. Mm. And the other thing is that if somebody really can't stop masturbating and there are growing consequences from it, The other thing is that if somebody really can't stop masturbating and there are growing consequences from it, that that's addiction, and that is virtually always in the setting of alcoholism. Okay, so. that, like he has the gene, right? You know, uh, I've said this before, but when when I was a kid, and and I know when you were a kid, Drew, Drew, they didn't have masturbation. No, they didn't have porn. No, <laughs> not that you could get your grubby little horny sixteen-year-old uh, paws on. No. And certainly not your ten-year-old paws. No, there, was, there wasn't anything like that. There wasn't. There was, it was not, not even beta had been invented yet. So there was no VCR. There was no video world. Yeah, there were uh, somebody's mm-hmm. brother who was a few years older, who was in the Navy, got hold of some kind of uh, 16 millimeter black and white thing where someone who had, like, like looked vaguely like your grandma was getting it on somewhere. I remember the one time I'd actually saw hardcore pornography. I was like 16 years old. Somebody's folks had to go out of town because, I mean, it took a while to convert the place. I mean, you couldn't just pop it on and, uh-oh, they're coming up the driveway, pop Pop it off. You had to screen, get screen, yeah, projector. And we didn't have a screen. All we had was a white chest of drawers. One of my greatest uh, comedic moments is halfway into the movie when I ran out, pulled the middle drawer out about a foot, and yelled uh, "3D." <laughs> I didn't uh, go over big with the other guys you who were through the, the squiggly line on the TV, just hoping to catch a tit every yeah, once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I would. I I used to watch uh, like the scrambled soft core yeah, stuff. Yeah. Those sound effects. You realize you're you're like masturbating to a guy's ass <laughs> for twenty minutes. <laughs> no, when I, when I there was uh, there were theaters. Like, like, yeah, like the Pussy Cat and stuff like and, that. And there was the Russ Meyer films. Oh yeah, and Russ that, Meyer films. That was it. Right. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I was so desperate for any kind of uh, uh, any kind of pornography <laughs> that I ended up getting hold of this 16 millimeter tape, <laughs> brought it home, and had to like hold it up to the light like some kind of mad scientist. <laughs> Yeah, with jeweler's loop on. <laughs> I was, yeah, it was like uh, we're, uh, I was like an old Jew looking at a ring. You know, <laughs> I mean, it was pathetic, man. But you know, the point is, is you know, now I go home, I got a bunker filled with uh, with uh, VCR pornography, and eh, it doesn't do anything yes. except for last night when I broke out the Holly Body one. Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes! I couldn't get home fast enough. I had Holly Bo- Body attack me on my chair last night in the studio. Thank God I had the I had the movie all queued up. <laughs> Were you kidding? Didn't even make it up the stairs. I had to wash it in the one downstairs. I just purchased. Uh, I couldn't get upstairs. My my pants around my ankles. <laughs> I just purchased this whole big old dildo set when uh, we were over in Chicago, that's, and that's I ran it through the X-ray machine on the, <laughs> the airport. Oh, that's yeah. I, I, I briefed him on. It. I said, "Hey, 
come give a look and tell me what you think this is. And I looked at it and she said, what is that? Assault said, weapons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, it's a dildo set. And the she brought package. everybody over to check it out. And she well, was really impressed. With you that. know, when people travel, away. they collect their own mementos. Some get those little salt shakers. And Steve, he gets the dildo set. Yeah. Three months on the road. Was it a dildo set you couldn't get in San Diego? Um... I think it was just I was thinking about coming home to see my girl so bad. I got, just, it was like an impulse buy. Impulse buy. Right. That's why they put the dildo in the window. They try to suck you in. Right. See what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a big problem. All, right. all, all, my, all I'm saying is, is every kid has a VCR now, right? Is there a family, no matter how far under the poverty level you're living, that does not have a, probably two VCRs in their household? And who, when you can go to a liquor store and for three ninety five pick up a hardcore tape, who does does not have uh, with millions of those and uh, billions of those uh, circulating. I'm like the Carl Sagan of porn. Billions of porn movies out there. Uh, that one or two of those isn't under the bed of just about every kid in America. Well, so get used to it, Drew. The question that I'd like to ask: Is it healthy? I kill myself. Is it healthy for young um, kids to get involved, watch the movies, I don't think the it's, magazines? I don't have an opinion. I, I mean, I don't know that there's any studies about that. I, my instinct is that 17, 18, it's not a big deal, but certainly before the age of 14, I have concerns, and under 12, I have grave concerns. So you wouldn't think, like, well, they, they're they just inquisitive, they're, they have sex drive, they're looking into it. No, no, under, under 12, their brain hasn't developed to the point that that stuff fits, makes so sense. So if, like, 15, 16, they weren't interested in it, then is that a problem, too? If they... You know, like, if they, they're and not... They're not aversive like to if, it? Like, like, like how Adam's saying, like, they don't have their stockpile of porn. Is there something wrong with the kid no, then? No, no. Keep in mind, you're answering questions of the guy who purchased the dildo I chub pack that. in Chicago <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and, then, and then convened the entire security squad at the airport to enjoy it on the x-ray screen. Colin. Yeah. You're 21. I am. Well, almost. But it just came out once, yeah. All right. What's going on? Okay, well, there's two little things. But first, I wanted to ask a quick question, and I don't want to upset you, Adam, because you're really funny and I like you. But um, did the poor man get fired just because of that birthday show? What birthday show? Do you know that? Mm, true. That is yeah, true. Uh, he was the guy who hosted this show for many man. years. Yeah, yeah he, he was even on Heather's. He was he, really funny. He, guy. Wasn't, he wasn't fired, no, at that point. He wasn't fired? Hey, no. Colin? Yeah. The the problem is is there's uh, 60 other stations that don't know who we're talking about. So okay, we can press on if you want to uh, don't write. Drop your... it. Forget the poor man, even though he was really great. But anyway. All right. Screw you. I'm Ooh. done with her. <coughs> Bye, Colin. Well, it's like it, listen. It's confusing. You mentioned a name five times. Uh, obviously, there's uh, some uh, motive there. But uh, anyway, Colin, you can uh, you can hang on for like uh, 40 minutes, and we'll talk to you later. Poor man hosted the show with Drew many many years ago, and then Ricky Rackman came in, and he was here for about two and a half years. Three years, yeah. And then uh, I've been here about two and a half years. So poor man was here. Three years, like October, right? Three years. Yeah, so Portman must have been about six five and a half, six, six years ago. Six yeah. years ago. Yeah. But uh, anyway, you ready to move on here? Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer. Yeah. You're 15. What's going on? Um, like lately, my mom has been ignoring me because she's like leaving the house and going away and leaving me here, or she's sending me away to my um her friend's house. And mm -hmm. I don't know how to confront her and tell her that I want her to spend time with me. It's like. I just, like, don't know what to do. Why she suddenly changed? Um, well, she was trying to get a divorce from her husband. Who was not your father? He was not my father. Mm -hmm. He's my stepfather. Mm -hmm. Um, and she finally did. And now she's, um, been going away to her boyfriend's house. And that's what she does whenever my, um, half-brother goes to his father's now. She goes and spends the weekend with her boyfriend. When, what do you, you're sent away when she does that? Yeah, well, I'm sent away, like, all week, and I'm home for, like, two days out of mm. the week. Have you met the boyfriend? No. Is, do you think there's something suspicious about her not wanting you to meet him? I don't know. I'm supposed to meet him in about a week. Mm -hmm. He's coming over, but I don't know, and, um, he's, like, because of him, my mom started smoking, and it's, like, really bothered me, because... Because of him, like, when she'd fall asleep, he'd sneak a cigarette into her mouth and then light it up and, no, but and it's take like, pictures? She, um, no, she, um, it's like, I don't know, it, he's changing her a lot. Did your mom, your mom smoke before, but she quit? 
Um, she used to smoke off and on. Right, and then she started on. Yeah. Because she, she's stressed out. Yeah, and he's probably younger, right? Yeah, I, I think. He's about, like, I think he's about in his 30s, early 30s. And so is my mom. All right, listen, I, I put mom on notice. I don't care how you do it. Just let her know that her behavior is affecting you. You don't have to. Right. You don't have to say what you would like. But I've, you have, right. I've tried to talk to her, but she doesn't understand that I get upset, and she doesn't understand when I cry because she won't pay attention to me. I mean, it's like not like I throw a big fit or anything. So but, you start um, crying, and she says, "What's wrong? What do you say?" I I say, "Well, like, well, about a week ago, we were supposed to spend um this day together, and All right, let's do a little role playing. I'm going to play your mom. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, uh, Jennifer. Yeah. I gotta drop you off. Uh, I gotta, I gotta pick up a, a carton of uh, Marlboros, and I gotta go to my young boyfriend's house to have some sex. Uh, I'm gonna drop you off at your grandparents' house, or at your friend's house. Where, where's she getting dropped off? She's dropping me off over um. Her mom's friend's house. Oh yeah. yeah. But she's also more my friend now. All right, at uh, Charlene's house. Okay. Okay. All right, so get in the wagon. <laughs> I um, Mom, are we gonna do anything? You, you and Charlene, you can do whatever you like. I'm just, I'm gonna drop you off. Okay. Um. When am I coming home? Uh, when I'm done smoking. About a week. About a week. I'll come pick you up. Okay. Um. See, I don't know how to confront my mom about it. I hey, I'm that. your mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your mommy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna drop you off. So go get in the car. And grab uh, uh, grab one of my sweaters and make it cold. I didn't hear what she said about mom's substance use. Hold on a second. I'm not done with my role playing. Not, she's not going to be able to do it. Oh, all right. But you I thought I was a pretty convincing mom. Did you say your mom drinks or smokes pot? Um, what? Does your mom drink or smoke a lot of pot? No, my mom doesn't. Doesn't do any drugs? No. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. it, she sounds, uh, she doesn't sound tyrannical or anything she just sounds like she's, she's abandoning it's very painful well she she's selfish she's yeah. she, yeah, she found she, a, a new guy she's excited about him i'm guessing there's something with the guy that uh it's not too hot yeah. not too hot and she doesn't but, want to bring but there out. is a distinction between selfish and abusive and total lack of empathy for a child is abusive well, and she is abusive. Right. Right? And she can't. The child starts crying and trying to well, trying to get her to just get in touch with the fact that she is upset about her behavior. Well, why are you cry? I don't get it. I can't get it. Well, on the other hand, terrible. Jennifer, may, you know, to be fair to Jennifer's mom, maybe Jennifer's not doing the greatest job of relating her feelings to yeah, mom. There's a reason. That's mom's fault. That, that's the parent's job. Wait till one of your kids goes on a killing spree, Drew. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to <laughs> distance yourself from them fast enough. Believe me. You'll, you'll start blaming the uh, L.A. water system. Oh, sure. <laughs> what do you think the chances one of the kids going out killing spray? You know, Drew, you're a celebrity. You know these kids, you know, like this Brando kid. He's a mess. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. The kids are the celebrities. They're trouble. You know what I mean? Do you go up the advice. silver spoon in the mouth. Hey, man, don't have to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All these kids, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Too much good advice. Celebrity kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, mental health care workers' kids, too. That's Two right. Strikes. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's, let's say, and you, you do the addiction specialist, the love advice. Oh, I can see the uh, headline in the tabloids now. Everything Dad says not to do. Yeah. He didn't bring his work home. That would be the, uh, that would be the, big, uh, the big headline. You are my teacher. <laughs> All right, thank you, Drew. Okay, Sprung Monkey. All right, well, let's uh, squeeze in our call. We'll How play. about the song? Why, we want to do Call Your Wife now? No, no, no. <laughs> That's where we do a song. This is where we do a song right here, usually. It is? Yeah. You have you, no idea when we do a song. I'm the one who usually tells you to do it. Yeah, but then what do I say? Uh, uh, okay, here's a song. Oh, I do? Yeah. Well, all right, all right, here's a song <laughs> then. This one's a uh, super breakdown. Oh, yeah, thanks, Adam. Song. You know, most songs you got to listen to a few times before you like them or even tolerate them. <laughs> I've never heard that song before, and it's good. Thank you. Imagine how good it is to you guys. You've heard it a hundred times. <laughs> I must really love it. It's getting better and better. Wow, it's a good band, the Spring Monkey, Drew. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, I, yeah. And I don't know better, I like it. We have a decision here. Yeah. Dr. Drew is Across right. the board. Drew's pretty heavily was in the Slayer, but now he's yeah, in the Spring yeah. Monkey. All right. I could sense that in him. Yeah, up down in the basement, <laughs> tying up the kids, little Slayer. Woo. All right, Spring <laughs> Monkey is here, and Drew's here, and the Slayer's not here, and we'll be back right after this.
Drew, Steve Summers, and uh, Mike Summers is here uh, somewhere from Sprung Monkey. Drew sprung off the phone, and uh, we're ready to continue. Before we go on, I just want to thank, uh, what name is that there? Is that uh, Leia? Up there, where my phone Lee. is. Lee? Lee that, Picard? That's it, like a chick Lee? Guy that's Lee? Hard to tell. Someone's guy. gay. Oh. Yeah, Lee and Krista. <laughs> Lee and <laughs> Krista. <laughs> All right, I want to thank you for the uh, long-winded uh, letter he sent me. And uh, also, I got a little piece of email that says uh, from Josh, I can't believe Comedy Central's Daily Show has ripped off Adam Carolla while touting uh, their tickets. They invite you to, to see the show that puts the F.U. in funny. And uh, as you know, uh, some months back, I was saying that I put the F.U. in funny, and uh, Drew puts the B.O. in boring. Uh, but... Was it ripped off from our show? Uh, the uh, we'll have to ask Mr. Al because I see I believe that certainly certain things that are sort of obvious but you haven't heard them before are bound to be thought of again. I, I mean, it's like you know when we were in DeKalb, uh, Illinois, and uh, they were saying barbed wire was invented here. You know, I heard about thirty guys come up and brag about how barbed wire was invented in DeKalb, and I thought to myself, listen. If, if no one in DeKalb invented it, it's not like we'd be living without barbed wire. Some other drunken idiot whose uh, corn crop went, went bad uh, would have invented it ten minutes later. And I think this is the same way with comedy. I don't necessarily think that they ripped uh, I Put the F.U. and Funny off, although it's possible. It's just uh, somebody probably said it long before I did anyway. I just never heard it either. Anyway, but uh, if, uh, if they say they put the B.O. in boring, Oh, I uh, thought of that one. Now those are fighting words. And that's really one of the only clever things I've ever he heard come out of Drew's mouth, except for the time I forced him to call me a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy. You are my Kathy. Teacher. Kathy? Kathy. <laughs> Kathy? Hey, guys, what's up? Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm scared to use your name now. Kathy. For, for, it's okay. I fear you'll parrot it again. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, you're 17, Kathy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Did we call you? Did you call us? Kathy? I called you guys. All right. So okay. what is it? Um. Well, I've been seeing this guy for a really, really long time, and we started um, sleeping together probably I don't know about a year ago or something like that. And at first, the sex was really, really good, but lately it's just been like, great, we're having sex now, and it just really sucked. Who's not into it? Me, I Why? never reach orgasm. Why are you I mean, not into it? He looks like he's having a great time, but I'm just sitting here like, okay. Why? What's the matter? Got a, he, I don't know. He just kind of gets it over with and is What's on his What's the matter, way. Kathy? What's the matter with the relationship? Oh, not, I've been with this guy for like three years. I mean, he's a great guy and everything. He's just kind of inconsiderate when it comes to things like that. In what way? He's not putting in the time anymore, huh? Yeah, he just kind of blows me off. Well, listen, all guys uh, start sliding into their comfort zone, <laughs> whether it's... Uh, think of, Just think about how a guy approaches work. He's ten minutes early, he's the last guy out of the office, he's uh, constantly going above and beyond. This is in his first week. Now, think of the guy three years into it. He shows up drunk. Uh, there's like, uh, someone comes up, uh, you know, the uh, Xerox machine is missing. Uh, yeah. This guy uh, put it in the trunk of his car. I thought you were going to throw it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's eating everyone else's crap in the refrigerator. He, he, this is how guys work. Have you spoken up to him? I haven't said anything. That's not even, like, the problem I'm worried about. He, like, came up to me, like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and he, like, asked me if he could, like, do me up the ass, and I was just like, oh, God. <laughs> and I, I don't know, because I don't want to, like, deny Did you let him, him anything. Try? You don't want to deny him anything? Yeah, but he's totally, like, not doing anything for me. Well, why wouldn't you want him to deny something? She's like a really naughty cheerleader, this Kathy. Mm -hmm. Oh, how, how did you know? She, did, she said uh -huh. do it up the ass like she was uh, doing a cheer. <laughs> do it up the <laughs> ass. <laughs> do it. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Everybody. Oh my Give me an A. An <laughs> S. <laughs> Where are you from? Oregon. Man, we got to move that. Oregon. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, you didn't let him do that. No. I mean... Uh, not yet, but I mean... See, why would you consider him do having him doing more things to you that you don't not interested in? Well, I'm not inter... I maybe would be interested in it if maybe I was even interested in, like, the regular sex part, but... Uh, but I'm not. Yeah, I, I understand. Not if, if you bring your car into a mechanic and you tell him to uh, put some brake pads in and he screws that up, 
<laughs> you're not going to let him crack open the transmission. Exactly. It's yeah, going to be a disaster. I, I don't want to tell you're gonna, him. You're gonna, yeah. Why don't you want to tell him? What the hell's the matter, Kathy? You've got I, a problem here in this relationship. Do you want to solve it or not? Well, I do because... And then you have to talk to him. Uh, go ahead and talk to him, but not so loud. Why can't he... What is the matter with being a woman that leads you to believe that you can't assert what you need to a man? I don't want to hurt his feelings. But in the meantime, your feelings are being hurt badly and con consistently. Yeah, I guess. Is that right? So. Yeah, yeah, totally. And the mean and the consequence of you not speaking up is this relationship starts to go down the toilet. Yeah. Tell the guy he'll be stoked. We want to know exactly what needs to be done. We don't want to go out and doing if he, the wrong job. And if he can't job. respond to that, then this is not the guy. You this is not a great guy. Yeah. This is not great. This is a guy who couldn't care less. He's not empathic. Mm -hmm. Doesn't you got to have empathy and respect for a relationship to work. I and mean, if he doesn't have those two elements, it's not going to work. Forget yeah. it. Unless you need abusive people in your life, and it's still not going to oh, work. Uh, Kathy. Yeah. You ever, uh, does he ever keep you in that cheerleading outfit? <laughs> <laughs> Spin you like a top? None of your business. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's no dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, guys want to, they do, uh, they like notes, they don't want criticism, but believe me, uh, if, if something feels better and it's no more extra work for them, they're certainly going to do it. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's in a non-threatening environment, it's not in the heat of the moment, it's when, when you guys are communicating effectively and things are relatively... Yeah, and never, never couch it like, um, the last guy was parking me, he used to do this, and, and it was and, really and good. don't wait till you're frustrated and pissed off, because wait, wait till you're feeling okay and just... Just okay. put it out there, matter of fact. Like, Kathy's a little, a little nutty, though, right? Yes. And don't ever fake it, too. Mm -hmm. Fake an orgasm. Well, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. To appease uh, I him. like that. Well, yeah, but then he's not... That could be another problem. Is she faking it for him? So he thinks he's doing an adequate job, or does he know that she's having these problems? Tell him the truth, Kathy. Yeah, Adam. That's the consequence of it. Tell him the truth. Yeah. I, that's yeah. very... Uh, he's probably thinking he's a champ right now, and he's... Wow. He, yeah, there's partly that and partly he's been going at it for three years and he doesn't care. And I, I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing this relationship has run its course. I've been going out since you're 14, you're 17 now. She's got it down to a commercial break. Vanessa. Yes. You're 22. Yes. What's going on? Well, um, not a couple of days ago, my dad, I called my dad. I called my dad every morning just to see how he's doing. And that morning he seemed like he was kind of down and I asked him what was wrong. And he told me that he had a dream. And it was a sexual dream, and I told him, you know, well, good for you, you know, type thing, you know. And he said, uh, I said, well, does it anybody I know? And he said, well, yeah, you know her real well. And I was like, well, who is it? And he said it was you. He said it was me, that he had a sexual dream about me. And I guess he said it happened a couple times before this, and um, and I don't, I don't know how to react to it. I just. Well, what's the nature of your relationship with your dad been like? Um. Well, I was messed up by my dad when I was eleven. Oh. You were and what? Molested. Yeah. By your dad? By my dad, yeah. And, and I was taken away from him. And what? And I was taken away from him by uh, child protective services. And wasn't he put in jail or anything? Um, he was in jail for six months. And he got out, and um, he was on drugs, a lot of drugs and stuff, and, um, and I just kind of stayed away from him, and I wanted to live my life a different way. And so um, uh. after, um, see, I don't understand why, because after I have, I have, I have three children, and after my third one, I I don't dress promiscuous. I uh, have sweats, long t-shirts. It's not about you. Know. you. It's not, you're, you're not doing this. Mm -hmm. right now, so no, but what did, not, hold on. Let, did something happen to you? Huh? Something happened to you later on in life? Sure. Between me and my dad or... No, no, you're talking about you don't dress promiscuously. I don't. Um, but you did for a while. Was there something you were going to... I I mean, I mean, I... Hold on, I got to smack through. Was there something you, w you wanted to finish there? Well, I used to dress, I mean, I had, I mean, I, I'm not, I still have the body I had when I had my first, or even before that, but I used to dress, you know, I used to wear the short shorts and the half tops, and but, and now I'm trying to dress more like, I don't have the time to really dress uh, up. All right, but what's this have to do with? I felt that maybe it was the way I was dressed, but... Well, yeah, I mean, your uh, you know, young daughter shaking her ass around the house, Drew, I mean, when you give your your young daughter a bath, I mean, that's torture for you, right? Do you want to tell what he's getting at, Vanessa? <laughs> no, not really. There is nothing you could do as a child at whatever age you're at mm -hmm. to evoke those sorts of feelings in a father who is uh -huh. uh, not uh, a criminal. Yeah, well, when I was younger, I used to think it was because I'd run around the... Vanessa, it's nothing to do with you. 
And okay. It's nothing. Hold on. Drew, if you're going to have an outburst like that, tell me. I'll turn my headphones down. <laughs> I swear to God, he just took six months off my life with that kind of... <laughs> you kind of jump out of the chair a little bit. You know, it if I wasn't so comatose, I would. It has nothing to do with you, Vanessa. It Even at my age now, I mean... It has nothing to do with you. Let's explore something. I'm going to vomit in a bucket. I, I swear to God, because this poor bastard, I mean, your dad is... He, he, listen, the impulse... To have sex with your daughter is so bizarre and so devious that it has nothing. To, if your if your daughter is Raquel Welch if or your Holly, daughter is Holly Roseanne Body. Barr, if it was Holly Body, well, I mean, <laughs> you gotta understand, man does have his limits, Drew. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Holly <laughs> Body is something different. But and uh, coincidentally enough, I'm sure uh, her dad got hold of her at some point. Right. But no, the the point is, is listen, ugly women are probably molested more than beautiful uh, women. I don't know where I got that statistic, but I'm going with it. I was gonna say it, it has nothing to do with physicality. Okay. This this is a this is a sick, screwed up uh, f, f of a man, okay, yeah. and uh, it has nothing to do with you wearing. Uh, oh, the, the way the diaper hangs around her ass. I mean, that <laughs> really stirs <Diaper> me. Ass. <laughs> let me let me uh, give you some advice about where this right. probably does come from. What was his drug of choice when he was strung out? Crank. Of course. Uh, yeah. How many meetings a week is he going to now? Now. Now. He's not in it anymore. He was in prison. He just got out April. All right. He's uh, he's on drugs again. He's not on drugs. No. He's he is on drugs again. No. If he's not, the clock is ticking. Listen, we're not listening to you, Vanessa. I noticed that. I, I'm, I'm the one who you. thinks it's your fault because you're wearing a pair of cutoffs. I'm telling you, he's either on them now or he will be in very short order. Or you're drinking or something. There's something going on. Vanessa, here. why are you calling this guy every morning? Well, because I don't. My I was taken away from my dad. I never had a dad. I don't. I've been in foster homes my whole life mm. and I'm trying to see I'm trying to forgive my dad mm. go ahead and thing. forgive him but accept him for what he is a, a sociopath and a criminal and a drug addict who's not in recovery mm -hmm. and that's a dangerous person to be around mm -hmm. if he gets earnestly back involved in recovery if he's ever been in recovery you may have a different person on your hands but right now you've got a, a seriously screwed up person mm -hmm. uh, and he's he's just giving you hints to that effect on the phone Stay away from it. Meanwhile, you got three kids, and yeah. uh, where's Daddy? You know, look what look what you. Oh, I don't. I'm not with the dad. Imagine, he left me. Uh, imagine that. Hold on, I got to scrape my partner oh, up off shocked. the floor. He's flabbergasted, yeah. <laughs> shocked. True. Would you ever in a million years predicted that? No. It's like the Hindenburg. Oh, <laughs> just a coincidence. Of course. Hey, Vanessa. Yeah. Listen. Uh -huh. you, you need a ton of therapy. You got to get yourself out of the denial. Keep him away from the kids. No more kids. Oh, so he doesn't go around my kids. Yeah. Now. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, listen, I don't want you around your kids either. Me around my kids? No, yeah, they need her. All right. <laughs> well, listen, watch. No, wait, the, wait, wait, wait. Watch wait. the guys you bring wait, home. Wait a minute. You don't want me around my kids? Yes. Because he's worried about the guys you're going to bring home. Oh, no. My kids are number one in my life. Vanessa, all right. right the stop guy, you're having so many of them. You're going to have a bad instinct with the guys you bring home. Just be very careful about them. Don't leave them alone with the kids, ever. Oh, no. Definitely three, not. Three kids, same guy? Huh? Same guy, all three kids? Two. Okay. Two of the kids, same guy. To the kids, yeah. Right. And then he left me when I was pregnant. I haven't been with anybody since then. All right, all right, good. Go lesbian. No, thanks. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it's not it's all right. Okay, if so them, pretty much I should just stay away from my dad pretty well, much. Yes. Uh, unless, yes. You, uh, unless he gets involved in recovery. Oh, for Christ's sake, he felt her up when, I mean, he, he molested her when she was 11, 12 years old. Now he's calling up going, I had a dream uh, last night. Yeah. This guy's like, tell, tell her about what that, what that means in guy language. When a guy starts talking like that. Uh, listen, in, in hippo language, it means I want a second helping. Yeah. Forget about guy language. He's trying to get a response. In well, that's way. right. He's trying to get it, get in. Uh, th this, this, this guy is, first off, I, I want guys like this locked up because uh, he's out of control. He's criminal. He's, he's, out of, he's nervy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, on top of everything, this is horrible decorum. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, um, Heloise says it right in the first chapter of her, of, of her uh, book that you should not call your own kids and explain to them that you've been having sexual fantasies Some about nerve. them. Very nervy. But no, I mean, come on, he felt you up and he's calling you and you want to defend him? Please, everyone who's listening is outraged. The ones who aren't stoned are outraged. <laughs> okay, that's three of them. All right, Vanessa, no more, none around the kids, and watch out who you bring home, and no more kids. You're 22. you got three kids. That's enough. All right, we'll be back. This is David Allen Greer, and you are listening to Love Mind with Adam Carolla and the one and only Dr. Drew. Who is that, Mike? I just saw the headphones on. Oh, yeah. I like him. Sprung Monkey is here. Hey. Mr. Funny Face is yeah. the name of the CD. 
kind of reminds me of the, uh, oh, was it. it the Voodoo Gloves Gloves? No. All right, or something else, someone else reminding us. Who made this uh, this head here? A friend of ours up in San Francisco. Very cool. Mr. Josh Greenberg. What is that, ceramic? Yeah. Yeah, I used to be a ceramics major in high school. We could, me and Josh could probably rap a little while about <laughs> pinch pots, coil pots, slam pots. <laughs> the uh, the uh, right cool fire. Yeah, we smoke a little pot while we're uh, talking about a pinch pot. Playing the mud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, what about that weathered feldspar? Uh, what do you think of that there, Josh? You like working with that? <laughs> How about the extruder? These are all the things I learned when I was a ceramics major, and thank God, thank God I was in high school. It's just really paying dividends yeah, now. Yeah, really prepped for this job, huh? Oh, I gotta tell you, ceramics comes up. I, I swear to God, if it comes up one, it comes up at least five times a night. Does it not, Drew? Adam, I'm making a clay dildo. <laughs> hey, put that on a cart, Mike. We'll use that. You can smuggle it through the airport, <laughs> Jeff. Hi guys. Hey, you're 19. So, uh, yeah, I was just wondering. Um, me and my girlfriend have been going out for about two months, and um, both of us have not um, had sex yet, neither with anybody else or you know the both of us together. And we're thinking about doing it, but every time me and her get really close and kissing before I have to, you know, go my separate ways at the end of the night, um, you know, our hands go in different places, and I was just wondering because I get kind of uncomfortable because. I don't know if it's just because I'm a really horny 19-year-old guy who's have never gotten any yet, or what, but is there supposed to be a lot of uh, moisture in my shorts as well as hers, or is that a medical condition for me to... Did you spill your beer? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Some some guys uh, emit a fair amount of secretion beforehand. Yeah, the penis is like uh, a dog when you're opening up the can of uh, cow can. They're just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, and then they start drooling. That's why the uh, early withdrawal method doesn't work. Yeah, pre-cum. Right. So what should I do? So you, you, got like a, you got a bad gasket, right? I guess. Bad washer? <laughs> uh, what do you mean, what should you do? You just stuff some toilet paper down there. Okay, what's You know, worst case scenario, she thinks you're really hung. What do you mean, what should you do? You mean when you have sex? No, like... Like um, well, how much? Almost like I ejaculate. Are you? Bed. Are you? Are you ejaculating? No. You I sure? Some comes out though. Does it? What's the sensation? It, there's no sense. I mean, besides that, I have a Woody. I mean, that's the only sensation. Just don't, don't worry about it. It's normal, Jeff. Well, what do you want? What are you asking us? You, you take a match, uh, put it on there, and break it off. I was just wondering if that's normal. Yes. That's normal. Yes. Yeah. The clear pre cum. Normal. Right. Don't worry. You're fine. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. You're all right, Jeff. God bless you for being a virgin. All right. That's basically what he said too, huh? Yeah. I uh, I don't have that. I uh, I don't like a drop. Nothing yeah. comes out till I tell it to. Does anything come out then? A little puff of dust. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> left, is there? <laughs> yeah. I have trouble hitting the carbon when I'm standing up. I mean, if it's windy, you know. <laughs> It'll just sort of disperse into the atmosphere. It's like spitting out of a plane. You know, honey, it's not like you hit a guy below. All right, Drew. Drew likes it. Uh, Drew likes when the ghosts come out of my penis, like in a cartoon. And, whoa, and then the mouth opens up real wide and goes right by the camera. <laughs> hey, Colin? Yeah. You're 21. Yeah. Yeah, remember you called about uh, 45 minutes ago? I do. All right. I had to punish okay. you. Okay. I know. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, there's a lump in my right breast, mm -hmm. Dr. Drew. Yep. And I was I was in the emergency room because I had a cut, and I asked the doctor so long as I was there because I was worried about it for him to check it out. And he said that I should definitely get it checked out. He said that most likely it was cyst cystic fibrosis. Fibrocystic breast. Okay. I mean, lumps in the breast your age are normal. Right, because I'm young. That's what he said. And do you but smoke he, cigarettes or drink a lot of coffee? The coffee thing. I was yeah. drinking. I stopped it for a long. I just started drinking. Well, coffee you still thing. get. I mean, they, they get more tender around the time of your period and that sort of thing. But no, no, it doesn't change around my menstruation. It, it, it doesn't have to. No, okay. your breasts get more tender. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. My breasts get more tender. Oh, boy, I'm not even a chick, and I know it's going on. It will get bigger or No, I mean, the too. lump doesn't move around or do anything. Well, weird. I mean, yeah, if, it, if the doctor's going to check it out, it'll probably have you get a mammogram. But, but I mean, cysts feel 
fairly fairly specific, and they're really common at your age, and that's what they well, are. Listen, says. then I went to another doctor because he told me to go to a, a doctor not in the emergency room. Right. And that doctor felt it, and he's all, oh, no, no, it's normal, it's normal. Like, yeah. Get out of here, basically. Yeah, it's, that's but now normal. it's growing and changing. As they always will. Really? Yeah. And you'll get more of them, too. And I don't have to get them out? No. No. No, no, no. Colin, are you good looking? I think so. Do other people think so? Yes. <laughs> like, uh, Mom? Like, describe yourself real quick. I think I'm cute. Yeah. Well, I'm really little. Yeah. I'm about five feet tall, and right now my hair is blonde, but naturally it's really dark, and my eyes are like green. What do you do? Some stripping or something? No. How do you make your living? You shake your ass somehow, right? For myself, for a special friend. Well, what do you do? What do you do for a living? Cocktail waitress? No. No, not at all. I was making sushi in a Japanese restaurant. Really? Yeah. I let you with the, around the knives? See, that's why I was in the <laughs> emergency room, because I sliced my finger up. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> See, I, I knew it was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, it is a bad idea for me to have a knife. All right, come on. But you, you, you're, how good looking are you, seriously? Seriously, like, in what way, Adam? Like, I don't know, I'm not, I, I think I'm cute. Okay, you're cute. All right. But, and then one other thing, I slept with a good friend of mine kind of recently, which was a... Lapse of judgment, because I was kind of... <laughs> That's going to be a like, uh, term that people are going to use now. Lapse of judgment. <laughs> no, I was just kind of, you know, <laughs> like... Clinton said. A little lonely at that moment, or... So, I was I'm not... Serious right. lapse of judgment. Was this a chick or a guy? A boy. Uh-huh. A man. So uh, what do you want to do now? What's well, the question? I, he's calling and things, and it's just kind of hard for me to talk to him, and I don't want to be like that. I want to be wants, able to uh, say... He wants another shout out of the tuner <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you better tell him. Tuna. You better just tell him. But listen, Colin, if there's any question at all, what I would do with somebody with a uh, question about breast lumps is just get a mammogram or get an ultrasound at least just to prove that's what it is. There mm -hmm. you go. You know, this uh, breast cancer is a real tragedy, Drew. It's all I ever hear yeah, about. You've got to be sure that there's no f immediate family member with breast cancer or ovarian cancer. So. What is the most prevalent form of cancer, Drew? Prostate? That's yeah. right. Do chicks have prostates? No. Okay. Can we focus a but little the, on the anus? Do men <laughs> die of prostate more than women? No. I asked what the most prevalent form of cancer was. Your wife prostate. asked this. Prostate. That's right. Now you never hear anything about the prostate. Zappa. All right. Drew, mm. I'm running out of steam. Oh, it's convenient. Okay, good. We'll take a little break. Uh, Sprung Monkeys uh, will be here, is here, and will remain here until uh, until Sunday night show where they'll be our guests again. <laughs> I don't want you guys to leave the studio. I'll slide some matzo under the door. <laughs> matzo. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All righty, then, swingers. Uh, Sprung Monkey. Mr. Funny Face is the name of the CD. You can uh, see them at the free K-Rock show at Irvine Meadows, uh, Blink-182, and um, Homegrown, and uh, MXBX. So... Uh, what else can I say? Guys, thanks for coming in. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Us. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having us. We'll, uh, we go out Very on impressive. your tour, do your thing, and uh, when you uh, swing by again, uh, you swing by. I mean, when you're uh, in town. So, until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Addiction Medicine Specialist.